Let's go to bed. I want to take the boat out alone. I'll be up later. No, I'll go with you. John? That will is no good. Your mother's still alive. We can talk her into changing it. You are always too greedy, Louise. I just don't like to see her exploiting you. Honey, she's leaving all of your family's money for charity in the name of this mysterious Kathleen. It's ridiculous. Your mother is crazy. You don't know anything about it. I know that music's terrible. <laughs> John, you're rowing too hard. Let me row. You're concerned about me, Louise. Is it my heart? Yes. You're only a member of the family as long as you're my wife. If I die before a mother, you're a stranger. In the coat. It's empty, you idiot. Go faster, Louise. <laughs> If I die, there's nothing in it for you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> John? John! I do. I gotta get rid of him.
back to New York on business or something. Mother, I am terribly sorry, but I have received an urgent wire from New York. Since I must leave tonight, I will be forced to miss Kathleen's memorial ceremony. But you all know my thoughts will be with her in loving memory. for his brothers, though. Especially the older one, Richard. The typewriter. He wouldn't forget that. He'd have to write letters on the plane. I wonder if he'll rot underwater. Everything. Everything. change that ridiculous will. everything works out with John's business. I'm sure everything will be fine. Your brother's always had a way of solving his own problems. I'm sorry, we're in your way. What do you think of Ireland and Castle Halloran? Ireland's fine. Castle Halloran is a bit perplexing. A very strange place, really. Old and musty. The kind of place you'd expect a ghost to like to wander around in. Kind of a haunted castle. Castle Halloran is haunted. By your mother. By Kathleen. I know very little about her. In fact, I didn't even know you had a sister until we arrived here. There's not that much to know about her, really. My mother was about 40 when she gave birth to Kathleen. It was like a gift, she used to say. An apple for the starving and Kathleen for me. She even had a poem. Three sons, each who would marry and go away. But little Kathleen would always stay. It's engraven on her little tombstone now. How did she die? She drowned in the pond. Passengers arriving. 
from London and Paul. Air Lingus Irish International Airlines wish you peace be the fortune. Your baggage will be delivered shortly on the conveyor belt. Passengers traveling onwards by air today should check at the passenger service desk. Excuse me, miss. Uh, are you Kane? Yes, hello. Oh, I'm Billy, Richard's brother. I came to get you. Oh, hi. I'm so happy to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, Richard's sorry he couldn't come to get you, but he's... Well, he's up to his elbows in statues, so I said I wouldn't mind picking you up. Thanks. That's awfully nice of you, Billy. Air Lingus Irish International Airlines wish you Cape Mila Foyce. Your baggage will be delivered shortly on the conveyor belt. My oldest brother, John, had to leave early this morning, but his wife, Louise, is still here. She's from America, so you won't get homesick. Uh, that's my bag. Oh. Is it cold? Freezing. But all old castles are like that. To tell you the truth, Castle Halloran gives me nightmares. <laughs> There it is. the luggage for a minute. Come on, I'll take you to him. This is where he works. What is it? I'm sorry, Richard. Sorry I didn't pick you up myself, honey, but I wanted to finish this statue. You look wonderful. Well, I find a statue reminds me of death. How very unusual, Lady Halloran. For a woman to have been married to such a famous sculptor and yet feel that way. Didn't uh, John mention when he was going to return? He wasn't sure. We thought I'd stay on for a while to get to know the family. And then if he couldn't make it back, I'd just return to New York. How long is a little while? As long as you like, Mother. Well, you're very welcome here, Louise. As long as you understand the privacy of our personal duties. I speak of the ceremony tomorrow. I'm sure John explained it to you. I'm afraid John was usually too busy to talk much about the family. That's why I'm so happy to be here, finally. You'll have a pleasant stay. And I'm sure you can find something to occupy your time during the ceremony. It won't take very long. <sighs> Perhaps I am superstitious. But I think it's important that only the immediate members of the family should give their thoughts to Kathleen. Excuse me. Mother, I don't care what tragedy hangs over this family. I want to get married. I'm engaged to be married. I'm going to get married. Moreover, I'm going to marry Cain. He's dead. He's dead for seven years. He 
You never talked so much when you were a child. I cried a lot, didn't I? Afraid I might be doing that again if you frightened her away from me. You want me to include her? To talk to her? Yes. Yes, I do. Very well. I will. I'll tell her I don't care for her. Mother. And I promise you, I'll never forget it. You said you didn't ride very much. I don't. I'm just showing off because I finally got you myself. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Louise. It's nice to see you're enjoying yourself for a change. The mood around this place isn't good for you. Well, she may be right. Especially an American girl. You can tell she's been raised on promises. What are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? I don't understand. I saw you squirming when Mother read the will. You gave John enough dirty looks to give him a heart attack. Don't joke about that. You know he has a bad heart. Uh, but I know you didn't mean anything by it. You know, I think you ought to spend more time with your wife-to-be. You're an intelligent woman, Louise. You notice things, size people up. You know when they're happy, you know when something's bothering them. I want you to do me a little favor. Of course. Keep that microscope you've got built into your eye off of me. I'll see you. Let me take you in, all right. Oh, there's plenty of you from up there. Must be very interesting to know about all the secret passageways. Oh, I know them all. I've been here 20 years. 20 years? How wonderful. Ah, well, you know how it is. You get used to a family, and you get to like your room, and you get to know the run of the house. And before you know it, there you are. 20 years. You must have been here then when, uh, the little girl. Ah, yes. That was a sad thing, that one. Lord Halloran was a much-loved man, and he invited one of the country fellows up here for his wedding. Oh, a big wedding that was, a big banquet, and everyone invited. She was all dressed up as the bride, running about to her heart's content all over the place. There's never been a wedding here since. What about Cain and Richard? Well, it's not my business, but I wouldn't be betting you'd see another wedding here. Well, I must go back to work. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm fine. I was just remembering about Kathleen. Kathleen. Oh, yes, little girl. Richard told me all about her. We used to play together right here. Sometimes I think I can still hear her laughing just like then. Is, is this the pond where... Yes. Yeah. She was missing all night. Mother was frantic, almost uncontrollable. The next morning, we found... Kathleen floating in the water, right over there. I'm sorry, Billy. No, Kane, I'm sorry. 
I'm not always so morbid. The, the, the funeral ceremony is today. It's a very beautiful pond. You know, this is all just exactly like I imagined Ireland would be. It rained the day of the funeral. We stood around her grave under black umbrellas. And then we threw flowers under her little headstone. Mother looked at the flowers. And then she collapsed. Every year it's been the same. The umbrellas, flowers, the mother's collapse. But that was years ago. Why do you keep having the same ceremony over and over again? There's some things you don't understand. Not yet. Mother's probably waiting. Is Richard ready for the ceremony? I don't know. I think he's in his studio. He said he had a sudden inspiration. Something about wanting to finish a statue before... All right, Simon. I've seen you. Come out of there now. I give up. You caught me fair and square, Master Billy. I give myself up. So, it's poaching again, are you, Simon? Well, let me tell you, you just about scared the wits out of poor Miss Kane here. Shame on you, Simon. Shame on you. It was only old bushy tailor, Master. Miss soul rat. I swear by the shade of Finn McCool, Master Billy. I'm not poaching your legal game. No, it is only that no good rabbit stealing fox that brings me here. Please, Master Billy. For the memory of your late great father, God rest his soul. Don't turn me over to the bulls. Of course not, Simon. But don't let me catch you running around through the brush again like this. Now off with you. Oh, God bless you, my boy. It is a true sign of the late great lord and his estate, you are. Forgive me, miss. The last thing in the world old Simon would want to do is to frighten a fresh young beauty like yourself. Bye, Simon. Old Simon likes to think of himself as the last of the great Irish coaches. Isn't that dangerous, running around with a gun like that? I don't think it's been fired for 30 years. I'm not even sure it's loaded. Well, and how does he catch anything, or does he? Well, he sets out snares for rabbits. When he finds them empty, he blames it on old Bushytail. Old Bushytail's a fox. Or at least Simon thinks so. Nobody's ever seen old Bushytail, and I don't think Simon has either. Let me help. Have Lily prepare her room. I'll take care of her. What happened? One of the flowers died when it touched her grave. Oh, 
hear something in this house. Like music in the hallway. Like a child's music. Asking me something. But more like begging me. Begging for what? Begging for her mother to listen to. Give us a sign. I promise you.
you lost? No, are you? I think you'll find that you're in quite the wrong part of Castle Halloran to find your room. Good night, Louise. Good night. Consider your mind as a bird in your hand. When it's relaxed, it lies quiet and easy. But when it's tense and frightened, it strains to leave you. Quite a simple principle, isn't it? You're engaged to treat my body, not my mind. Now don't you try to separate that which nature has joined. What I'm trying to say is this, that every year at this time, you work yourself toward a point of hysteria. You remember 
you worry, you imagine, and then you collapse. I just can't believe that such a punctual cycle is physiological. And aside from all this, am I well? Aside from all this? Oh, yes. What I want you to do is to rest and to relax your mind. Remember the uh, bird in your hand? Come in. Uh, will you bring us some address for Madam something youthful and cheerful? So that we can have lunch on the terrace. And my daughter-in-law, Louise. She isn't in her room. I don't think she slept there last night, if you were to ask me. Yeah, but nobody's asking you, little girl. Uh, hurry up with the lunch, or I'll wish five years of spinsterhood on you. I must know where Louise is. I never noticed this interest in your daughter-in-law before. Will you please find her, Lillian? Yes, ma'am. Uh, her ladyship's summer dress. Anything will do. Tell her I must see her, do you understand? Mr. Halloran, the mistress sent me to find your sister-in-law, Louise. Have you seen her, sir? I'm sorry, Lillian. We left pretty early this morning. She's not in her room? No, sir. Her room wasn't even slept in. Try asking my brother. Yes, sir. Luncheon is served on the terrace. Thank you. I wonder where she is. I don't know. Ask me what I did today. <laughs> right. What did you do today? Nothing. Ask me why. Why? Because you weren't there. Thought you were going to work. If you're going to be my wife, you'll have to be of the trusting, silent variety. Hey, Richard, you seen Louise? Uh, no, I haven't. Why? I don't know. Mother's looking for her. Oh, is that Caleb? He's back. Good afternoon, Mother. Good morning, Caleb. How are you, Richard? I'm fine, Caleb. And no more headaches, I trust. Unpleasant things, headaches. Knowing away at a man's most valuable possession. Uh, congratulations on your charming fiance. Lillian. Patrick hasn't seen her, ma'am. And Arthur says that none of the cars except Master Billy's has been used. Have you counted the silver? <laughs> Probably the most astute diagnosis you've ever made, Caleb. You're all being ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Put it away. Probably belongs to the gardener's child. Now, this is very bad for your mother. They're Kathleen stars. I saw them float up from the bottom of the pond. One of you has a brilliantly imaginative and sadistically effective mind. I wish I could keep up with it. Dr. Caleb, take this home and study it. Fish the rest of them out, burn them.
going to pound it all out on that one little piece of metal? I don't know. You know, sometimes I get the feeling you think I'm some sort of a Christmas tree decoration. Hang me up and look at me on all the happy days, and tie me up in a box and put me in a closet when it gets gloomy. You knew what I was like. Oh, yes, I knew you were quiet. But when we first met, I could sit next to you in that little apartment watching you working and thinking for hours. It's this place. You know it is. What do you want me to say? Nothing. Kane. Believe me, I am sorry. I don't care whether you're sorry or not. Oh, Richard. Richard, I know there are a lot of things running around in that beautiful head of yours. I know that one of them is you love me. Of course I love you. But you must understand. Ever since Kathleen died, my mother's been running around with some sort of crazy guilt. Looking at every one of us. Trying to put it on one of our heads. Billy was only 13. Two months after it happened. He used to wake up in the middle of the night and come screaming into my room because he had nightmares about her. My own father died with his wife refusing to see him. Now I feel it's been passed on to me. I've got to wait. I've got to watch. Until we can make some sense out of all this. That leaves it up to you to decide whether you want to sit and wait with me.
I don't understand, sir. Of course not. How long would it take you to drain it? Well, I don't know, sir. I've never drained it before, and I don't know that I drain it properly. There are three gear channel doors on the pond. Open them. If I was you, I'd save that up for a visit to my office. You're losing weight. Skin's pale. the doctor. Will it be Dr. Caleb? Anybody. And get Richard here. Let's get her into the house.
Why don't you go to bed, Billy? I will in a minute. You're going to get all depressed sitting here by yourself. Did you ever see where my room is? You have to go down a corridor where nobody's lived for the past 50 years. Then up a flight of stairs where my great granduncle or somebody tripped and broke his neck. And then past the spot where my grandfather died of a heart attack. I'd rather be depressed here than there. Poor Billy. No wonder you used to get all those nightmares. Used to. I still get them. What are they like? Are they terrible? I don't know. They're more strange than terrible. I'm always a little boy. When I'm in my room. It's late. I hear somebody outside making a kind of a scraping sound. I get out of bed, look out of the window, and there's a man climbing up the wall, coming closer toward my window. I yell for my mother, and she comes into the room just as the man is coming in through the window. I hold onto her legs, crying. I'm so small, I only come up to her waist. The man is in the shadows. You can almost recognize him, but not really. He says that he's insane. And that someone else in the room is insane also. And that he's going to nod his head. And when he does, that other insane person will nod their head. He nods. And I look up at my mother. And she's nodding her head. And then she starts laughing at me. And she picks me up in her arms, runs outside, and throws me into the pond. Oh, Billy, we've all got to get out of here. Come on, go to bed. I want to keep past all those spooky corridors. Better get there before Richard throws us both in the pond. What's wrong? Nothing. You just made me realize the man in my dream who climbs up my wall is Richard. I'm sorry. I just never thought of it before. Just a dream. Excuse me, but Arthur's here. He says he has something important to tell you. Excuse me. And Arthur? I drained the pond, like you told me, sir. And there's something there I think you'd want to see. Show me. Richard. done? I never saw that before. Quite skillfully carved, I must say. I worked in iron, remember? Six years ago, you worked in stone. I never did that. Every one of us worked in stone. 
My father loved teaching us. Someone else did that. I didn't. No one else pursued this inherited talent. Nobody? Leave him alone. He told you before he's never seen it, and he meant it. Come on, Richard, let's go. No. He's trying to play a game with me, don't you see? Your mother lies in bed in a state of shock caused by something or somebody. I don't call that a game, Richard. Has the all-seeing doctor noticed that a certain money-hungry, conniving little woman has uh, left our midst? That my mother in her struggle clung on desperately to a very valuable diamond tiara? But I think that shrine has been in that palm for five or six years. I don't think that five or six years ago Louise had even heard of Castle Halloran. Do you? What do you want out of this, Doctor? Oh, I don't know. Just a solution to the nightmare that has disturbed this family for six years. After all, I am the family doctor, you know. I didn't mean to annoy your brother. Because I think he's right. I think Louise did try to steal your mother, Sayahara. And I think she'll come back. I think she's hiding somewhere in town. Will you help me look for her? Sure, if you want me to. I do. Because your brother's upset and the young girl, too. That leaves the two of us. What do you think? Sure, I guess you're right. We'll look for her tonight. <laughs> I told you not to follow me. Look at you. You're frightened to death. Now settle down. What are you doing here? The studio where my father worked. Kept his stone cutting tools here. I was trying to find out who made that monument. Oh, Richard. Please, I'm sorry. I'll never doubt you again, I promise. We can get married now. Your mother's still sick and she won't be able to stop us. No one will be able to stop us. Well, this is the devil's own climate. Good for the grass and the country doctors. If I had to survive by treating the common cold, I might as well retire. Too large Irish for Master Halloran. Oh, no, no, I don't care for any. Oh, just to take the chill from your bones. Drink's the only road to survival in this climate. Despite your useless American education, you're still Irish, you know. Drink up. You know his sister-in-law, John's wife, an American girl. Fair hair, fair complexion, you'd know her. No, I have never seen her. I've seen her as a chemist, Doc. 
about two or three days ago. Thanks. Thank you. Over here, Billy, nearer the heat. Drink up. What do you think, Billy? Where did she go? I don't know. Come on, let's go. How, Fred? You wouldn't begrudge an aging man his moment's rest, would you? You know, I think you know the answer to all the problems your family's been having. Because, Billy, you saw your little sister drown all those years ago. No, I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. You know how I know you did? No. Because you told me. I didn't ask. How, Fred? Come on, drink up. Do you remember all those years ago when you couldn't sleep? Do you remember who it was gave you the little pill that made you sleep? Remember the dreams? Faces in the shadows? The man climbing up your wall? I haven't forgotten. Who was that man? No, I don't know. Who was it that tried to throw you in the pond? Richard. Tell me what happened. What happened to Louise? Fishy, fishy in the brook. Daddy caught you on a hook. Fishy, fishy in the brook. Daddy caught you on a hook. <laughs> Has anyone here seen Richard? No, I haven't seen him. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes. You know, the one thing in the world that really chills my bones to the marrow is when a pretty girl in a wedding dress looks at me and finds me repulsive. Oh, don't be silly, Doctor. Oh, I'm often silly. One of my major vices. Another one is a desire on my part to help others, however, fancy that mess up. Then you can help me by telling me where Richard is. I'm not sure where Richard is. Oh, indeed, uh, what he is. Oh, and you wonder why young girls in wedding dresses give you dirty looks. No, no, no. I'm quite serious. I've known this family for a very long time. I've been aware of the atmosphere of depression and the slightly demented quality that hangs over it. But these are subtle matters, so I never spoke. I will tell you, young lady, that I know that Louise did not leave, but was taken away from Tarsal Halloran. Perhaps even her husband, John, didn't actually go on that business trip. I don't know what you're talking about. Because you don't know what I'm talking about. You think I'm some kind of villain. Can you imagine what it's like to try to help others and to be mistrusted every time? My lip twist. This doesn't mean that every word I say is sinister. I don't know what you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say to you that I've discovered things in this house that make me uneasy. And that you are probably in a position of some danger. From Richard? Primarily from Richard. But I'm not sure. It could be anyone. Well, maybe you have forgotten. But I certainly haven't. I'm his wife now. And his sister and his sister-in-law and his mother. And perhaps his eldest brother. I swear to you, Dr. Caleb, you are a very sick man. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
What's the matter, honey? Where have you been? I was just outside having a smoke. Well, let's get out of here. I don't want anyone to see me cry. <laughs> Come on, I don't care what anyone says about you. Who said anything about me? No one. Everyone, I don't care. hanged you on a hook. Papa's caught you on the hook. <laughs> children play with stone the way other children played with the building bricks. They all forgot what a talented little boy Billy was. What about Kathleen? He made a wax doll, something he could protect to relieve his guilt.